when he changes, or maybe we can just go for a walk or something, just some things that are on your mind in, you know, in, the, in these weeks since the letter and since all of that, things that you, that I didn't cover, that you feel strongly about, that you might want to say. I want to give you the okay. opportunity to say those things. Okay. Sean, uh -huh. how would you like to do that? Do what? I was going to ask you this question. Uh, to set up some other kind of shots now. Okay, what kind of, do you want talking shots? Or sure. you want well, I mean, maybe we could just do a B-roll walking shot last, but... Maybe we can do it outside the building where the fountains are. Sure, sure. Are there any other questions? Or I don't know. We can, <laughs> we can certainly frame them as we... Right. But, it, again, it's... You know, gossip is a funny, funny business, and person A tells a story to person B, and it changes slightly by the time it gets to Oh, yeah, well, there was a story like a about... telephone game. Oh, yeah. But there was a, a story as well how supposedly I was in Rock, the Roxbury a, a couple of weeks ago kissing a woman, which is completely ludicrous. Yeah. You Something become like the object. It's, 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 it's extraordinary what happens to someone who attains celebrity status. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really extraordinary. It's well, almost it, like a you're a thing. It's like you're a bed a of hot coals, and you mm. have to walk out there, mm. and um, it may or may not burn your feet, really, depending mm. on your attitude. Well, my attitude is that it's all, it's their problem. It's nothing to do with me, and that I just be, carry on and do whatever it is I'm doing. You know what I mean? I don't think of myself as being a celebrity. I think of myself as being a, a human being, and uh, you know, I do whatever I would do if I was working in Woolworths. You know what I mean? And <laughs> the rest of them can get on but with these whatever. But it's amazing how celebrityhood takes on a life of its own, mm. and you know. You but for everyone outside, not for for you. Although for some people it does, but not, not for me it doesn't because you know there's nothing to do with me. Are you rolling, by the way? Yes. Oh, okay. Go on, go on. Uh huh. It's because it sells. It's it goes back to money. It sells newspapers. If somebody puts a story in about Sinead O'Connor being a hypocrite in some way, or you know whatever, or anybody Sinead O'Connor having Peter Gabriel's baby, you know what I mean? It all sells. You know what I mean? You know. W at what state are you at, by the way, with your next record? Uh, the stage I'm at is that I don't really feel like doing one for a long time. You know, I feel like having a long rest. Uh huh. You know. I mean, I, you know, I probably will do one, but n not for a while. Again, not to be too crass and commercial, but have you been advised to make one quickly because, no. you know, it would... Cash in on the... In the <laughs> present climate. Well, I'd have to make one very, very quickly, wouldn't I? Like yesterday, you know. No, uh, you know, my record company are, are remarkable uh, and unique in the fact that they realize that it's really up to me. Uh, you know, f when I put anything out, you know what I mean? They're not, they're not a, a sort of, they haven't been sucked in the way the rest of the industry has been sucked in, you know. They but I wonder <laughs> though, I wonder though, if you were signed to any other <coughs> label right now, whether you would be saying that about whatever label you were on, because there is an aspect of the record business that, I'd like to think that a lot of executives recognize the individual mm. talent of a particular performer, you mm. know, and they know that, well, this person feels this way about all these different subjects, she should be treated that way. Well, it took a long time for it to get to that stage with Chrysalis. It took a long time and it took, it took really the fact that, uh, I mean, I had an enormous problems with them and they had enormous problems with me until most of the staff left and were replaced by normal human beings you know what I mean? and, and since then everything's been fine but up until John Sykes came in and a lot of people were changed around it was hell you know what I mean it was hell some of the things that they did or you know some of the decisions that they took on my behalf with, without ever consulting me you know what I mean really embarrassing things that that could have like ruined my career like more than anything I've ever said or done could have like what 
I like th um, they took it upon themselves to th about three years ago to put out these postcards and they get these great ideas like for promoting your record and they send them to radio stations they put out these postcards with uh, <laughs> a picture of Marilyn Monroe and Ronald Reagan and somebody else who was it Elvis Presley right, with with no hair with these bubbles coming out of the mouth saying I like Sinead now what r what DJ is gonna play a record after he's got that crass thick thing delivered with a record, you know what I mean? Well, they've come yeah. a long way. They used to just give money. You know. <laughs> oh, well, they probably still do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. If, if, if Hitman is, is true, <laughs> that's a good book. Read it. <laughs> you know, it's funny because most of the record company executives that are really up, up in arms now about me are the ones that are written about in that book, which is very interesting. Yeah. Do you think those executives are really up in arms about you or you're just the latest in a long line of, you know, lunch. Well, that's all any of us are to them is lunch, with the odd exception. You know what I mean? Uh, or, you know, I think that I'm not particularly lunch to my record company. I may well have been a while ago, but not so much now. It, like I said, because the people have changed and been replaced by, uh, you know, human beings instead of androids. You know, but I think that most people in the industry are androids, <laughs> and therefore uh, all they know is lunch. Uh, all they're driven by is lunch and their mortgage, and you know they don't have any regard for human feelings whatsoever. Some of the things that go on are disgraceful. Some of the way that artists are treated. And if you know. and, and if your contract was up right now, those very same people would come oh, knocking uh, at your door. Uh, precisely. Well, it's like a, a paper. There's a paper in in England uh, called NME who have a history of of being very hateful towards me, and they don't like me, and uh, that's all fair enough. But you know, they put out these articles all the time about you know what a hypocrite I am and how horrible I am and how this, that, and the other I am. But they're the very ones that are on the phone every week wondering, will I be on the cover? You know what I mean? Because they want to sell a whole lot of magazines. You know. It's ridiculous. It's a system that's been in place for a very long time. And I've found over the years that there are those artists that will always speak out, will always say how they feel. Mm -hmm. And however the public reacts to them, they still continue to say what they feel through music or through uh, or in interviews or whatever it is, that that mm. that that freedom is as real as any other freedom here. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's supposed to be, isn't it? It's supposed to be all over the world. You know. you know, a lot may have to do with the fact that you're a woman. I don't know. I used to think that. I think that that's an easy way out, almost. I I think that w certainly the industry. Uh, can be extremely uh, patronising towards women. You're supposed to have long hair, wear push-up bras and, and lip gloss, uh, you know, and shut up and sing, you know. Um, I think it can be that, but I don't think with me particularly it's that, because it, f right at the beginning of what I was doing when I was faced with that, um, I got rid of it and nobody uh, <laughs> sort of threw it at me again. I think to a certain extent, maybe you're right. I think maybe if I was a man, there wouldn't be such a fuss about it. You know what I mean? It's just not expected of women. I don't know. But then nothing about me particularly uh, in people's minds uh, conforms to what a woman should conform to. But I don't know if it's so much a conscious problem that they have because I'm a woman. You know, I think it's because I, I'm, I'm not a conformist on any level. You know what I mean? Well, you know, it's interesting that two women that you say or have been have said in in some of the interviews that i've read uh, that you like or respect how they feel or whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, barbara streisand mm -hmm. and roseanne barr mm -hmm. have been uh criticized similarly oh yeah i mean you know what's everybody's problem with roseanne barr you know what I mean? <laughs> it's ridiculous you know? she basically just says what she feels and sticks up for what she believes in. Same mm -hmm. with Barbara Streisand. And there, it's you see, and a lot of it is societal too, because a man who does that may be considered aggressive. A yeah, but it's okay for a man it, to be aggressive. Uh, but a woman who does it is usually called pushy. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. I hadn't really allowed myself to think about it too much. You know what I mean? I suppose it could be the truth, though. But I'd isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it interesting that the women that you kind of gravitate to, to, to mm. what, how whatever their art is or whatever they say, mm. are women who have been in the same position? 
I suppose so. I mean, I respect anybody uh, who is prepared to stick up for what they, be they believe in, even in the face of enormous pressure. You know what I mean? Uh, whether it's people like Roseanne Barr or whether it's people like the Two Life Crew. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, I think the the guy from the Two Life Crew is a genius. If you read his interviews, if you if you look at how he used the platform that he was given. You know what I mean? The, his interviews are amazing. The, his brain is amazing. The way he articulates himself is amazing. You know. Sold a lot of records too. Expert at articulating yourself and being a diplomat, and you know, <laughs> it's really ridiculous. You know? Are you cursing less because this is television? Uh, I'm. No, I. I uh, most of the time, I think I've only once cursed on television, which was on our senior hall, and that was an accident. I've most of the time been able not to do that, um, because it's very easy for people uh, to make me out to be aggressive anyway, and I think if I curse, it doesn't particularly help that, although at the same time, I'm a human being and everybody curses, you know what I mean? But, you know, people would concentrate on that, I know from experience, rather than what the hell I'm saying if I'm sitting here effing and blinding, <laughs> you know? So. Mm -hmm. It's kind of. It, it, do you find that if you're sitting for a television interview as opposed to a print interview, that sitting for a print interview is much easier because you really don't have to censor yourself? No, as much? I prefer television interviews because they can't be distorted, although they can be by people like Entertainment Tonight. <laughs> I prefer them because the, y y people can see what kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas when they read something in print, there's no tone to it, there's no life particularly, and it's just a sentence and you read it in your own voice. You read somebody else's opinion in, in your own voice, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not so realistic, it's not so human as a, a television thing is.